The diseases that are common in our society, like immune disorders, cancers, heart disease, psychiatric neurological disorders, we call those complex disorders. What has become clear in the last 10 years is that across the board, the common complex diseases have a polygenic architecture. That means that their etiology, from a genetic perspective, represents perhaps thousands of genetic risk loci, each contributing a very small amount to the overall risk. A polygenic risk score combines the DNA information from an individual with what's known about particular DNA variants in terms of their association with disease. And that combination can create a predictor. We're actively investigating how useful polygenic risk scores can be in the prediction of osteoporosis. If you can tell someone ahead of time that they're at high risk, then there's behaviours that individual can then perform to mitigate the risk of that disease in the future. I'm particularly excited about the translational potential of genetics in glaucoma. Glaucoma is the most common cause of irreversible blindness, but one of the major issues with the disease is the fact that uh, about half of people who have it don't know they have it. A polygenic risk score can be applied to a person when you don't know uh, whether or not they're gonna get a particular disease. You can then correlate a particular a polygenic risk score for disease with other attributes that you measure on that individual. Some of the things you need to think about when constructing a polygenic risk score is how are you going to combine the variants, how are you going to include family information, include environmental factors. There may be some questions with regards to different ethnicities. It's not necessarily the case that a, a polygenic risk score is going to do very well in other populations. If you were to create a PRS for a trait that hasn't been done before, the first thing is to extract as much information from the data. The second one is to validate it in a completely independent sample. The third consideration is whether it actually has any utility. The diseases and disorders that are most amenable to, to application of polygenic risk scores are those that are highly heritable and for which a lot of the genetic variation is easy to capture. But it's actually only recently, perhaps in the last 10 years, that we've had the technology that's allowed us to actually identify DNA variants associated with disease. And the paradigm which has been successful for common complex diseases is what we call the genome-wide association study. These are typically very large-scale studies these days of tens or even hundreds of thousands of individuals where we investigate thousands of individuals who have the disease and then compare their genome against thousands of healthy controlled individuals. Genome-wide association studies have been extremely successful in discovery of variants and genes that are associated with one or more diseases. The more we're going to measure, the more polygenic risk scores we can produce. I believe in the next 10 to 20 years we're going to see an enormous wave of applications. It's really important not to over-promise what polygenic risk scores can deliver, but I do think that they will be introduced. We might imagine estimating polygenic risk scores for people in a population, and those with the highest polygenic risk score might have more intense screening strategies. I see we've built a model for predicting glaucoma risk based on PRS. The model that we have works well enough that we can, for example, predict that some individuals will get glaucoma 10 years earlier than others. We're hoping that in the future we'll get a more effective stratification of individuals. I think that polygenic scores are going to be part of the future. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think that most people will be genotyped and will have some ability to say how much they're at risk of various diseases through life. Now's an incredibly exciting time to be doing genetics.